In this lesson, we'll learn how to create vector curves with brushes inside Sketchbook Designer. All right, great. So this file looks very similar to the one we saw in the previous lesson. The main difference we have here is that instead of a paint layer, I've got a vector layer just named shoe over here. So go ahead and select that with me and notice that our toolbar is set to vector mode. And uh, I've got my attribute editor open here. And um, what, I, what you need to know about brushes for a vector layer is that for the most part we have the exact same brushes available to us. Again, we have our pencil, our pen, our brush, our marker, our airbrush, our custom brush, and then we have this thing right here, which is in re uh, replacing the eraser. This is called the guide curve brush, and uh, we're actually going to learn about that here in the uh, actually a couple of lessons from now. So um, now what, let's just go ahead and zoom in on our line work here, and we'll work on this shoe layer. And I'm just going to select the pin here. And we'll just select this first, what's known as a curve mode here. This is curve stroke mode, as you can see as the tooltip pops up. So what this means is that we're allowed to free draw our strokes. So if I come in and I draw a stroke just like so, that vector that's created here follows exactly the stroke that I create. So uh, in the case of this shoe, kind of a typical workflow would be to come in here and let's say we wanted this line right here. We just come in and kind of draw that line. Let me hold spacebar and rotate my canvas, get a better angle. And we'll come in and we'll draw that line. Come in and orbit around just a little bit. Draw that one right there. And we'll come in and draw that one. So you'll notice here that kind of the lines I'm drawing well exceed kind of the lines that were drawn in the pencil drawing. Like this line right here goes way too far. But uh, we're actually going to learn about that in the next lesson. And that just removes, it's, that leaves what is known as a tail. And there's a way to get rid of those tails. But um, let's go ahead and just kind of take a look at what we've created here. Let's go ahead and grab this tool right here. This is simply called the Select Vector Curve Tool. So um, now you'll see that once I click on that, let's just go ahead and I'll just click over here on this curve I drew to the side. You'll notice what was created here. So um, the first thing you need to know about vectors when it comes to Sketchbook Designer is that when it comes to any other application that you may have used, forget what you know about vectors because Sketchbook Designer really doesn't work like any other application. Um, with a few basic um, a few basic similarities. Sketchbook Designer has a completely different approach to the way it does vectors. So what we've created here is our vector curve. We have control points at either end, which in other applications those may be called anchor points or something along those lines. But um, these control points control sort of the direction of the curve as it goes through them here. Uh, now let me go ahead and grab my pen tool and sort of create another line here. You'll see here, again, we are basically able to free draw, again, another vector curve. And again, we've got control points here. So um, now I'm using the curve mode for curve stroke mode. Again, that's allowing me to do sort of these free form lines, these ones that are very much allowing me to draw them exactly the way I want to see them. Now, this next mode here is for curve point mode. This one works a little bit differently. So um, let me just come in here, and you'll notice when I click, it sets a control point here. Now when I click again and I set another control point, you'll notice here that only then does a stroked curve appear. Now if I were to come over here and draw yet another one, you can see here that now we can begin to kind of create a curve here. Um, we're basically allowed to add these control points wherever we want them. We can come in and we can actually move them around with this exact same brush. Maybe we want a curve that looks something like that. And when we're done, all we need to do is simply click on this little check mark right here. Now you'll notice here that these control points each have a little X next to them here. So um, if we wanted to, we could come in and simply click on one to get rid of it. And then come over here and redraw another third point here. And we could click on the little check mark to confirm that's the curve that we want. So this is, again, curve point mode. It's a little bit different than 
curve stroke mode, but again, it allows you to get some really nice curves. Now, the next one we're going to look at here is polyline mode. Now, polyline mode is sort of similar to curve point mode. Um, let me just come in here. I'm going to use this tool. And I'm going to delete a few of these here, just clicking away from them, dragging sort of a marquee selection around all of them and hitting the delete key on my keyboard. And we'll come in again and select polyline point mode. So this one allows us to simply create curves that are straight lines. Every time I click my mouse button on the canvas, we're creating our curve. So um, I know that there's no curves, quote unquote, in this particular vector path, but this would still be referred to as a curve. So um, now there's no necessarily closing of this path out. So um, if we wanted to close this path out, we just simply drag this over and drop that particular control point on top of another one here. And uh, now we've created essentially a fillable shape. Now I'm going to grab again this select vector curve tool. And you'll notice that there's a little bit of a snapping that occurs when I do that. So uh, what you need to look for to make sure those are right on top of each other is that little red dot that appears right in the middle of that control point. So um, now this is technically considered a closed shape that we could add a fill to if we needed to, uh, whatever we wanted to do with this closed shape. All right, great. So uh, let me just go ahead and delete that path here and jump back over to my pen. And we'll just take a look at these uh, last few curve modes here. These are simply for drawing ellipses, circles, and rectangles. So um, you can see here if I click and drag, we'll draw out an ellipse. And you'll notice here that there are really two control points, actually three. We've got the one here, we've got one here, and then we've kind of got this one in the center. Now we can reposition that curve wherever we want. We can maybe grab this one and adjust the width of our ellipse we can grab this one and adjust the height there in this case. So we can create our own custom ellipse, basically. So uh, let me delete that again. Now you can switch to this select vector curve tool by hitting the V key on your keyboard. Uh, but again, the circle curve mode, or circle point mode rather, is going to create a circle and the rectangle is going to create a rectangle. So um, some basic shape modes, if you will, some bit ways to create some simple primitive shapes. Um, now, most of the time when I'm using vectors, I'm using one of the first couple of curve modes here. So um, something, again, like the curve stroke mode or maybe even the curve point mode. So um, let's go ahead and come over here. We'll just grab curve stroke mode. And I'm going to come in here and let's just try and draw something simple. Let's try and draw a straight line. Now, I want to show you, I'm just going to draw that kind of slow so my line's a little bit wavy. You'll notice that as you draw these curves, this little thing right here is going to appear. So, um, essentially, Sketchbook Designer has the ability to recognize exactly what you're trying to draw. So, in this case, I was trying to draw a straight line. We can simply click on this little button right here, and you can see here, Sketchbook Designer is going to go and flatten that line out for me. So, uh, if we click on that again, it's going to give us uh, basically an arcing curve, very much like an ellipse. And if we click on that one more time, we're back to the original uh, curve that I had drawn. So uh, again, this is the shape recognition capabilities of Sketchbook Designer. Now, uh, let's go ahead and just delete that curve. And I'm going to go ahead and grab my pen again. And let's come over here and draw a circle. Now, uh, drawing a circle by hand without any kind of a rule is sort of a, a challenge. So we're just going to come in here and draw a really quick one, sort of like that. Obviously, my circle isn't the prettiest circle in the world. It's kind of lopsided. Uh, but Sketchbook Designer knows exactly what I was trying to draw and can recognize that. If I come over here and click on this, you'll see here that it gives us a circle. Click again. It's going to give us a little bit of an ellipse and back to sort of the original path. So um, again, come in here and try and draw some paths like that, or rather some curves. And you can see here that <laughs> Sketchbook Designer has some really awesome shape recognition capabilities for its vector paths. I do want to show you a couple of other things when it comes to creating basic vectors with brushes here inside of Sketchbook Designer. So 
over here in the attribute editor, you'll notice here that we've got very much uh, the same type of controls as we had before. We can select the type of pin, in this case we want to use, the size, the intensity, but we have this show stroke option. So uh, obviously with the show stroke option turned on, we're able to see the stroke. If we turn that off, you can see the stroke is hidden. So if you were to maybe draw a closed shape and apply a color fill to that, Maybe you didn't want the black strokes on the curves that you drew to create that shape. So you could come in here with those selected and turn that stroke off. So I want to go ahead and turn that back on. Now, when you create a path, let me just draw a really squiggly path here. You'll notice here that uh, there were no additional control points created here. So um, you can see we've got one at the beginning and one at the end. Now we can actually increase the number of these control points simply by adjusting the grip setting right here. So these are, I'm calling these control points, but they can also be referred to as grips, so because they are gripping the curve. So let's come in and say we want five grips. And I'll just draw a squiggly line. And you can see here that we now have five different grips that are working together to create this particular curve. So um, when it comes to editing that curve, that's going to give us a little bit more control over how we can start to edit that particular curve. So with that said, let's go ahead and move on to the next lesson. Now, um, we've talked about creating these curves here inside of Sketchbook Designer using the same brushes that we create pixel strokes with. Let's go ahead and in the next lesson, learn how we can begin to select and modify our vector curves.